Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the American National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we have at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-sprangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave So, welcome to another episode of Hooks and Dice. I'm Leela Croca, and this is Tommy. He's my fiancé that I've been talking about in the previous episodes. And he's visiting for a couple of weeks uh, here in the U.S. And uh, we are going to share the episode today. So I will give a link to his face or not Facebook, but uh, YouTube page at the end of the episode. So today is International Day in honor of Independence Day in the U.S. Uh, Fourth of July. We are celebrating that. And the national anthem was sung by my daughter Marina who's a little camera shy, which is why we had the flag up instead of having her on video. She's like, no, I don't want to be recorded. So we went ahead and recorded her voice and added it in. And she can't hit the high notes right now. She's got a bit of a cough. So there is a key change in there that you may or may not have noticed, but that's why. Um, been working a little bit on the wheel cover. Let's turn it right side out. Not that it matters. It looks about the same both ways. So I've already gotten to row five on this. It crochets up pretty quick. I'm pretty pleased with it. And um, should be done with it pretty soon. Uh, it won't take long at this rate, the way I've been crocheting it. I just started this morning and a few minutes ago, and I've already gotten to row five on it. So it'll be uh, pretty quick and easy, and I'll have it to show you next week, probably. I know I said that about the blanket, but the blanket was a little more complicated. So. Um, we're going to talk about different uh, yarn websites, international yarn websites, and we're going to talk about um, time differences between his time and mine. It's a nine hour difference? Yes. Yeah, nine hour difference. So it makes gaming interesting, especially if the games run late and he has to work the next day. That's always fun. <laughs> For you. For us. Yeah, it's fun for us. Um, the yarn store that I want to talk about today is Yarn Paradise. And there were there was a Yarn Paradise in the U.S., uh, North Carolina. And they closed its doors November 3rd of 2013. So the Yarn Paradise that I'm actually talking about today is Yarn hyphen paradise instead of yarn space paradise it is located in turkey in istanbul and they've got several brands and sites that they actually run um the people that run it is gsc textile uh, distributed i don't know what tic stands for limited sti there's lots of stuff abbreviated there. Don't know what it stands for, but they're a company out of Turkey and they have great, great yarns at good prices. And we will give you a link to them at the end of the episode. Um, yarn Paradise in particular, they started their first sales through their eBay username, Yarn Paradise, which is where they have the hyphen from. And they still have a good store on eBay. They've got over 7,000 customers and tons and tons of yarn on sale. So they're a place that I'm going to buy some yarn from to make some slippers for my sister. She 
asked me for a pair of slippers and she wants a color that of course I can't get a hold of locally so I'm going to go through Yarn Paradise. His mom turned me on to it so it's very nice. Um, I'm not crocheting on the pattern right now because it's a pattern I haven't done before and when it's a pattern I haven't done before I have to read and I can't read and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and crochet. Read, talk, and crochet is just asking a bit much for me <laughs> so the game time we start uh the games that tommy and i well one of the games that tommy runs is at 11 my time yeah yeah, yeah. that's monday right that's monday monday mm -hmm. and that's every other week so 11 my time is 8 p.m my time 8 p.m his time and then the people in seven England. Seven for them. Yeah, seven for the people in England, and I think we've got someone else from the U.S. Isn't he? What East Canada, Coast? Canada, isn't it? Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was the East Coast U.S. Oh yeah, yeah, it might be. Yeah, it, we should have asked <laughs> <laughs> before we started the episode, but um, so we have all these different time zones that we're coordinating with for the games. And we usually run it by my time. I don't know why we decided to do that. Why did we decide to do that? What do you mean? To start at 11 my time and then everybody adjusts figuring out what time. I don't know. It was, apparently it was random. <laughs> but um, the Wednesday campaign that he runs is at 10 a.m. my time instead of 11. Mm -hmm. And that's every week. And then I run the campaign that I run on Fridays at 10 a.m. and that's sporadic because <laughs> we've got someone in Germany, we've got someone in England, and then of course we've got Tommy and myself. So it's a little more difficult for whatever reason to coordinate between the four of us on Fridays than it is for the other campaigns with the other players. Well, Germany and Norway have the same time zone, so. Oh, there you go. And Stuart actually um, is in your time zone too, I think. No. No, he's an hour off. Hour off. Hour off. Yeah. Yeah. You get especially some difficulties during the switch between summer and winter time because the US changes there. Oh, summer yeah. winter time and another time than we do it gets really confusing. Yeah, so. Um, but we manage, you know, sometimes we'll have someone be an hour late because they didn't know about the time zone, time zone change, but it's all good. Um, we were going to talk a little bit too about the differences between Tommy and myself <clears throat> as DMs versus being players. Mm -hmm. So we have very different DMing styles and mostly that's because I'm new at it and you've been doing it for how long? Uh, well, I... Before we started up again, I haven't done it much lately, but I started playing eight years ago or so. Oh, no, yeah. actually, yeah, no more than that. So, but quite a while longer than I have. Yeah, it was in actually in 2001 or two. Oh, so, yeah. okay, yeah, so quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've... Two years for me? Yeah, it's been... Yeah. Two and a half years? Yeah, yeah two years now. Yeah. And we started up after summer. We started up in the autumn, didn't we? Yes, I believe we started in autumn. Yeah, so this autumn it will be two years. But that's as a player. As a DM, it's yeah. only been... Not even that. Half a year? Half a year, maybe? No, I wouldn't even say half a year. I don't think it's been that long. You started up after you visited me. Right. Yeah, so... Time. Three, four <laughs> months. Yeah, somewhere in there. But, um... So, I'm still very much a noob when it comes to being a DM. And he's got more experience. How did you get started as a DM? Was it because no one else wanted to? Well, uh... A school friend of mine uh, introduced me and my brother to the game but he lived in Oslo and we lived in Hanifos so it's uh, a ways to drive and we wanted to play more so we had me and my brother who didn't know the game very much and some other people who 
it had played even less than we had, so like, okay, well, someone needs to do it, so, well, I'll do it. <laughs> so you kind of got roped into it. Well, I picked up the books and then sort of fell in, like, okay, well, I'll do it. And now you have a subscription to Pathfinder. Yeah, yeah. So you get all the books. <laughs> well, all the adventure paths, not the hard copy books and the rule books. And the oh, books. okay. Just the adventure paths. Just the adventure paths, yeah. Mm. I haven't got any of the books, so I'm doing homebrewed for now, but depending on how well this campaign rolls out, I'll see about maybe getting other, getting some books from Pathfinder, but for right now I'm just kind of like, I'll be lucky if we make it through the campaign. <laughs> I don't feel like I do a very good job. You do a fun job. Oh, well, thank you. That's thank nice of you. He has to say that. He's my fiancé. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, if people are using Roll20 for to arrange their games, you can enter in the time uh, the game starts and it will adjust to people's time. Yeah, uh, that's really nice. Use, uh, that. Yeah. So, player-wise, he's been playing longer than me, too, obviously. But um, I think I do a much better job as a player than I do as a DM. Well, it's less to keep track of, so that's for sure. Yeah, but... yeah, there's that. But I just I'm really good at role playing, and that's a lot of what we do. So, um, world building, I'm working on it. I have a homebrewed system for text-based, turn-based, uh, T1. <coughs> role-playing game that's now defunct because uh, some of my younger players at the time decided to start a war that basically almost devastated the whole planet. No. Yeah. So I haven't had any new players for that website, but I can give you a link to that at the end so you can look through the site and say, oh, this was neat, or gee, I can see why they quit. So, <laughs> um, being a player for his campaigns is a lot of fun. I really enjoy the difference between the two campaigns that he runs. Um, how do you feel about what what you play in my game? I enjoy it. It's uh, I do have a character in one of my games as well. Um, strangely enough, they're both dwarves. <laughs> Was that by accident or? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I I wanted a uh, wanted a dwarf for the druid because I, I kind of like the theme, and um, it's an unusual combination. Um, druids tend to be human or elven. Dwarves tend to not be so nature based. They're more stone and gems and gold. But I wanted her to stand out a bit, so that's why I went for dwarf. And on the um, a bit more um, numbers thing, they also get a bonus of wisdom, which is nice for a druid. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, the archer, uh, she's a sen archer or a monk archer, and I kind of like the, the the theme of having uh, again the same sort of the same deal there, where it's uh, not. Usually, you don't see a dwarf as an archer, or you you see some dwarven monks. If you've played the Neverwinter Nights uh, two game, the one of the NPCs there will turn out to be a monk later on in the campaign. It's um, so, uh, and the the fun things with the monks are they start to walk faster later on as they get uh, faster movement speed. So you'll have a dwarven archer running around like crazy, <laughs> just taking pot shots at everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's great. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the family that I met on the train on the way to Seattle this past week when I went to pick Tommy up. Uh, great kids, nice lady. Hello, good to. Hello. Uh, hopefully, you guys are able to find the episodes again. I you talked about finding us, so. Uh, big shout out to you guys. Hope you guys had a great vacation and that you made it home safely. Um, that's about it for this week's episode. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.